This is a quick overview of how to download and install FreeSurfer. All you need to do is go to this link and follow the instructions step by step. I'm going to show you how to use it on my machine. I have a few quirks that are specific to my operating system. But if you feel confident enough, just go ahead and do it on your own. You'll save yourself some time. If you're still with me, here are the system requirements. Now, just for reference, I'm using a MacBook Pro from 2011, and it works fine. So if you have that or more recent, you should be okay. Next, here are the build platforms. I'm going to focus on the Mac OS build platform. If you click and download this DMG file, it unpacks and installs like any other DMG file. I'm not going to go over the specifics here because that's pretty straightforward. Now, click on this link right here because for Macintosh users, you'll need to install Xquartz 2.6.7. The rest of this page has a useful visual guide on how to install FreeSurfer onto Macintosh, but I'm not going to cover that here. Now, with setup and configuration, it has two separate shells it goes into. So remember, Macintosh, the terminal is like a Unix emulator, and different shells have different syntax for the commands. Now, for a Macintosh, I use the T shell. And I know that upsets a lot of people who just love the Bash shell, but tough bananas, I use the T-Shell. To make this easier, click on the Apple Systems and Preferences, and then Users and Groups. Look away while I type in my password. And then right-click on your username. Click on Advanced Options, and then switch the default, which is Bash, to TCSH. Wasn't so bad, right? Once you've done that, open up a terminal and then add these two lines to your .cshrc file, which is your startup file for any new terminal that opens up. You can do this through VI Editor or just open it up with a normal text editor. And here are the two lines of code that I add to mine. You can ignore everything else, but these are the most important ones corresponding to these lines right here. And once you've done that, anytime you open up a new terminal, you should see this output right here, showing that all of these variables have been set, and FreeSurfer will need to set them in order to run appropriately. There are two environmental variables you should be aware of. One is called FreeSurfer Home. This is in all caps. If we look at that variable, it's an application's FreeSurfer, which is the default for the Macintosh download. Now within that, we have several different directories, which we'll get into at a later time. And you also have a environmental variable called subjects underscore dir. And this is where you process any of your subjects. So if you don't want to use the subjects folder in FreeSurfer, because let's say you have different studies and you want to use them at different times, here is the easiest thing that I've found. So in the T-shell, set env is for setting an environmental variable and I set subjects dir and then in back takes pwd so if I look at that again that should return the directory where I set the subjects dir variable so it saves you some time now once you've done that follow this link to obtain a license key Give them all of your personal information, if you think that's a wise idea, and then they'll send you an email with a license.txt file. Click on Download, and you can either show this in Finder and manually move it to your FreeSurfer home directory, which in my case is applications slash FreeSurfer. Or, what you could do is, from that Downloads folder, move the license.txt file to FreeSurfer home. And once you've done that, you can test out some different commands to see whether FreeSurfer is set up appropriately. So let's try this command right here. MRI convert sample 001. I'm going to go to FreeSurfer home and then to the subjects directory. And we are going to type MRI convert sample 001. And let's convert it to temp.nifty. 
it works, didn't throw an error, so that means that FreeSurfer is now configured and ready to run. You can follow the rest of these commands and see whether it does in fact work. In particular, check to make sure that FreeView is working okay. Again, make sure to install that XQuartz 2.7.6 file before you try to use that. We'll cover these other commands, such as recon all and examining the directory structure in future tutorials. Good luck, and I'll see you guys soon.